This 102-year-old cottonwood tree wood carving grew from the same soil that supported many of the men and women it honors for their bravery and sacrifice in battle and protecting our freedoms. Maybe you've seen some of these memorial sites which are located all over the world, erected to honor Canadians who have given the ultimate sacrifice and for their courage and bravery in battle. But of all the memorials, no matter where they're located, it's often the ones that are located closest to home that really make the difference. For many of us, it's hard to imagine what the horrors of war were really like. But stories like the soldier's tree help make things more meaningful and more tangible in our own lives. When we walk up to the monument, we have two soldiers. And one soldier at the front has been wounded, and the other soldier is helping them back to safety. And what you'll see, that each soldier has his rifle in, his, in their hand, and there's two military principles right here off the start. The fact that they're both holding their rifle, a, a soldier soon learns that a a soldier and his rifle are one, and it's drilled into them by the corporals and sergeants. The second principle you see here is the buddy principle, because if one soldier is hurt, and the other soldier is helping him, the corporal here is helping him back to safety. And once these soldiers get into a war, they realize that uh, they're not all going to go home. And as a result of helping each other out with the buddy system, they know some of them will get to go home. So that's the reason why they help each other out, because they know together they've got a chance to go home. The soldiers you'll see on their shoulder flashes, they're badged with South Saskatchewan Regiment, because the South Saskatchewan Regiment was the regiment that was formed here after World War I, and it was one of the first regiments mobilized for war when World War II broke out. So all kinds of young men from this part of the province here joined the South Saskatchewan Regiment, and they joined other regiments as well. So if we can go further up the monument, Right in the center there, you'll see that what looks like a flag. Well, it's a Queen's color of the South Saskatchewan Regiment. Regiments have a Queen's color and the regimental color. And back before World War I, colors were carried into, into battle. And they're not carried into battle anymore. But the South Saskatchewan Regiment colors hang in the Southeast Military Museum at the, at the Legion Hall here. And that's a replica of the Queen's color. Then when we're done, we don't have so Up at the top here, we have a sergeant resting on arms reversed in, in respect for his comrades. And anybody who's been to a Remembrance Day service will see, see sentries posted at a cenotaph in, the, in that position. It's called resting on your arms reversed. And a little further this way, in the center, we have a pilot officer representing the Air Force and a Spitfire. And top at the left is a sailor. As the uh, Army doesn't go to battle by itself, it's all the, the Navy and the Air Force is all also involved. So we want to have all three services represented on the, on the monument. Up there you'll find a cap badge. That's the cap badge of the South Saskatchewan Regiment. Every soldier on his bray or cap, they wear the cap badge. So that's the South Saskatchewan Regiment cap badge. Down here to the left, 
And we have a spray of poppies and a battlefield grave. And a couple of pieces of poetry. A fellow by the name of Lester Heinzman, it was, this was his idea to have some soldiers carved in a tree. His dad was a sergeant in the Regina Rifle Regiment. And Lester wrote a piece of poetry, which we thought would be nice to have it represented on the tree. And this other piece of poetry here is from a poem for the Fallen, written by Robert Lawrence shortly after World War I got happening. And that piece of poetry is recited at all, all Legion functions. Yeah. And up there is a female Air Force sergeant. Back then, females were not allowed in the combat arms, but they did everything else humanly possible to assist in their military endeavors. And at this day and age, females are allowed in the combat arms. gives you the general outline of what's carved in the Esteban soldier's tree. And uh, when they were first done, they were just the color of the, of the tree, but he afterwards painted them. And we have a World War I, this is a World War I soldier from the PPCLI, which is the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. And the PPCLI were the first Canadian soldiers to come up against the enemy in World War I. So we thought that would be an appropriate regiment to be represented. Here we have a sailor who sailed with the Royal Canadian Navy during the war. And after the war also served on the HMCS Saskatchewan. Here we have a pilot officer in the Royal Canadian Air Force. And the Royal Canadian Air Force not only had fighter planes but bomber aircraft. And the Royal Canadian Air Force uh, had inflicted upon them the highest percentage of casualties during the war. And over here we have a replica of Master Warrant Officer Finstead. He was a grew up in Estevan and he represents the soldiers of today and he finished his career in the Canadian Army with the PPCLI as Detachment Sergeant Major at, at Detachment Dundurn. There are so many interesting and unique places to explore in Canada, and here are a couple of suggestions. Just click the link and I'll see you there.